What is up YouTube? I'm back once again with another DIY electric bike video. Now in today's video I'd like to show you basically the charging process of my scooter, uh, how it connects to the scooter, how I have it configured as in wiring and um, how I deal with balancing all the cells and stuff like that. So uh, definitely stay tuned. It's been a while since I've uploaded. Um, so definitely leave a like below. If you do enjoy these uh, electric scooter videos, I will be having I will be making another video soon, um, doing a bit of a distance test with this. Uh, so basically, let's just get right into the video. Uh, so as you can see here, we have two 7S 6P packs. Um, each cell is 2100 milliamp hours, so that's roughly 12.6 uh, amp hours, something like that. Um, that doesn't seem like a, like a lot for an 1800 watt motor, but it actually is. Um, I can ride... Uh, maybe 15 to 20 k's uh, with you know uh, sensible throttle nothing too hectic but but yeah it's definitely surprised me uh, if you do lay off the throttle uh, you definitely save a lot of power um, then from here we have two uh, connectors coming off one is a XT60 connector which is commonly used in like RC um, hobbyist kind of uh, uses and then we've also have the we have the 7S BMS connector which has uh, eight wires coming from it, not seven. Um, but with that, I have that on both. Um, I also have a uh, balance checker, so I will fire that up uh, right now and show you the balance on each of the cells. So yeah, um, this is a charger I use. It is the ISDT T8 Battery Go Smart Charger. Um, this is rated for 30 amps at any uh, voltage range that is at 4 volts all the way up into uh, 28 or 29.6 which is 4.2 volts per cell or something like that. Um, but yeah, so it can do 8S which is really nice, I'm only doing 7. Um, so yeah, uh, whatever the max is for 8S. Uh, but anyways, uh, I have two wires from an XT60 connector going into my Tesla Powerwall battery. Um, Still, I haven't got a new solar charge controller. I'm thinking about getting a PCM60X, which is for another video. Um, they're very expensive, but um, basically, I've just been charging this with the wall um, and using this as like one big power supply for this because this requires a lot of amperage. Um, but yeah, so just two alligator leads connecting there to negative and positive. And then if we go to the unit, you can see there's obviously nothing plugged in. If I just focus on the screen, um, if I press down on the down arrow, um, you can see 26.1 volts, um, 30 degrees, which is like the ambient temperature. Um, I'll plug one of these in, so we basically, every time I charge it, is I like get this connector. Um, I usually actually put this one in first. What they recommend doing is get this connector. Put this connector in first, XC60, like so. Nice and easy. And then... Uh, grab your other connector, which is a 7S BMS connector, that's what I usually do, and just plug it straight in. Like so, you can see uh, all the pack voltages, um, they're fairly well balanced as it kind of corresponds to the other voltage test we did um, with those other battery checkers, but that's that pack. Um, basically how I would charge it is I would click the middle button, and then I choose my settings. So I usually do 4.22 volts uh, for that extra range. And um, then I charge at 10 amps. And uh, yeah, just a basic LiPo charge. I do the same with the other one. I can check that as well. I'll just pull this out and connect the other one and I'll be straight back to you. But yeah, so here's the other pack connected. That's the, one I've, the other one that we just did. Um, this one here is the pack uh, currently connected. So you can see it's fairly well balanced. This one's balanced a lot better than the other one, um, but that's kind of just uh, the way it goes sometimes. Uh, they're not always perfectly balanced, but um, with this I'm pretty happy. Um, so yeah, it's the same kind of thing. I'll show you a bit of a charge. It probably won't charge too much, but you can see it counts up the milliamp hours on the left, um, tells you the time and uh, the amperage at the top left-hand corner, uh, what's going into the battery. So. Uh, it's fairly nice. This is basically fully charged. And um, yeah, so far I'm really liking this setup. Um, I'll go down to the scooter now 
So we were at the scooter. Um, there's a bit of wear and tear um, on the deck where the battery used to rest. Now I have it mounted in here, um, which is a lot nicer, better uh, weight distribution, and it's not as um, quite exposed. So here's the main connector. Uh, so you got negative and positive going into the controller, which is mounted under here, which is you know very large. Um, and then we have a splitter, which I made myself. You can buy these um, from Hobby King or something like that, but. I decided to make one myself. So here's that connector right here. You can see we have uh, the negative and positive um, kind of joined together, like so, like daisy chains, and then we just have the main negative and positive going into a single XC60 connector. So this allows me to connect one up to here, connect the other to here, um, which is still in the charger. Um, but it allows me to connect these together, and then when I want to charge them, I disconnect them, charge them in 7S, and then I connect them into 14S and I get uh, roughly like 58 volts or something. So um, it's really nice. Uh, I will be making one of these for my BMS connectors as well so I can have these charging in parallel and then I'll do the same with a parallel version for the XC60 so I can charge both of these at the same time which would be really nice. Um, hopefully they'll balance evenly better as well. But um, other than that, that is pretty much it for this update. Stay tuned for my range test on my electric scooter. And uh, yeah, definitely get keen for that. Um, I'm going to go for now and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.